The Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the Kingsmen and Billy Mills Orchestra. There's something you can't help seeing when you polish a floor with Johnson's Paste Wax. And that's the exceptionally bright luster that it gives your floors. And when you step back and look at that rich, polished surface, you understand why more women use Johnson's Paste Wax than all other types of paste wax combined. So it's natural to insist on getting genuine Johnson's Paste Wax when you go shopping. Not only because of the glossy finish it gives to wood surfaces, but because Johnson's Paste Wax also protects your floors. It forms a hard shield over the surface that dirt can't get through, and that's very easy to clean. Just a stroke or two of a dry cloth or a mop zips the dirt off that dry, hard surface. So next time, ask for Johnson's Paste Wax. Be sure you get genuine Johnson's, the wax that more women use than all other paste waxes combined. No other wax can bring out the beauty to your home in exactly the same way. It's a fortunate housewife whose husband is handy with tools. Take Mrs. McGee of 79 Wistful Vista, for instance. When her washing machine broke down yesterday, Mr. McGee went right to work on it. And here they are now, getting ready to take their laundry downtown to wash it. <laughs> As we join Fibber McGee and Molly. The laundry bundle's in the front hall, McGee. Did you bring your sport shirt down out of the bedroom? No, I can wear that shirt again, Molly. It's only the collars and cuffs that need washing. <laughs> we used to wash a whole shirt when it's just the collar and cuffs that's got the... I'll dirt. go get it. Okay. Oh, gun it, I still can't understand why our washing machine don't work perfect now. I fixed it myself. Yes, you did, lover. You betcha. And I'll admit that when I turn it on now, it doesn't throw soapy water all over the basement like it used to. Naturally. When I fix and something... And it doesn't growl and slap me in the face with a wet shirt like yesterday. Good. You know, and all I done... In fact, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> including run. It just sits there. Put the laundry in the car while I go up... Where is this place we're taking it to again, Molly? And why don't they come and pick it up? Most laundries come and pick it up. This is a place where we do our own laundry, dearie. Oh? Called the Sudzamat. Sudzamat? Sudzamat. They furnish the washing machines and soap, and we furnish the soiled clothes and 30 cents for each bundle. No <laughs> <laughs> kidding. They charge by the bundle, eh? Well, let's not be chumps then, kiddo. Let's take a bigger bundle. <laughs> let's go first class. Jerk the slip covers off the Davenport. Take the drapes down. I'll roll up the No, we'll, no. We'll give them a no. bundle. <laughs> A bundle, sweetheart, is whatever you can put in the machine at one time. Yeah. That bundle in the hall is about three bundles in the subdomat. What are you smiling at? <laughs> that laundry. <laughs> I never noticed the resemblance before, but don't that laundry bag look like Doc Gamble in a hospital smock? <laughs> <laughs> now, if Dr. Gamble heard that, he'd... Come in. Oh, it's Mayor Latribia. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Hi, Latrib. Hello, Mrs. McGee. McGee. Good day, Dr. Gamble. Oh, oh, that's your laundry, isn't it? <laughs> you see, Molly, I told you. <laughs> We're just taking it downtown to wash it, Mr. Mayor, at the Subzimat. Oh, a very good idea. I did my own laundry for three years during the war, you know, in the Coast Guard. That's right, you were in the Coast Guard, weren't you, Latrev? Hmm? Himself here tried to get into the Air Force, Mr. Mayor, but he didn't have 20-20 vision. no. I couldn't see a 20-foot wall 20 feet away. <laughs> Medical examiner told me to go home and eat a lot of carrots, and I says, will that fix up my vision? And he says, no, but it'll get rid of a lot of carrots, and I hate them. <laughs> you ever see any of your old shipmates, Mr. Mayor? Uh, very rarely, but oddly enough, I had a communication from the Coast Guard just this morning. What'd they say, kid? Somebody go behind your back and make you a rear admiral or something? <laughs> 
An important message, was it, Mr. Mayor? Well, it was about establishing an interfaith chapel at the Coast Guard Academy in New London, Connecticut, dedicated to all Coast Guard heroes who gave their lives in war and peace. And it was authorized by Act of Congress in July of 1947. Oh, that'll be a fine memorial, the trip. What do they want you to do about it, Mr. Mayor? Donate a small sum toward it, which I will, of course. You see, ever since the Coast Guard was founded in 1790, it has been without a chapel for religious worship. It's been forced to use gymnasiums, theaters, mess halls, and other buildings badly equipped for such services. Well, it's about time they got one, Latrice. They've sure earned it. Indeed they have, Mr. Mayor. Any group of men who have been on their toes as long as our Coast Guard deserves a decent place to get down on their knees. For a cause like that, Latrive, I might even toss a couple of bucks on the tambourine myself. Deductible, I presume. <laughs> yes, it is. We'll mail it today, Mr. Mayor. I've got to stop at the drugstore anyway. Me too. So do I. What for? <laughs> That's a secret, kiddo. Surprise. Hey, did you see much action in the Coast Guard trip? Yes, yes. I was in the Marianas on the invasion at Lingayan Gulf and the support landings at Zamboanga. You ever see any submarines, Mr. Mayor? Oh, yes, yes, I did. Mm. I was up in the crow's nest one day with a pair of binoculars. Up in the what? I was up in the crow's nest. I was on watch My that day, and I had goodness. a pair of... I thought you boys kept those boats so spick and span. <laughs> Imagine letting a bird build his nest right up there. Uh, just just uh, wait a minute. When a sailor refers to a crow's nest... Don't they ever hold an inspection on them Coast Guard tubs, Latrib? <laughs> My gosh, when I was in the Army... 1918, the big war. <laughs> if an officer had found a crow's nest in our barracks, why we... I been... tell you, this was not a Neil Rosecrans. Huh? I mean, a real crow. Now, 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 don't be so angry. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, we have nothing against crows. I think they're cute. <laughs> Sure, they may steal a little corn now and then, but my gosh, don't we all? <laughs> all we meant was... Look, look, will you wait a minute? Will you listen to me? Will you give me a chance? Certainly, Mr. Mayor. Now, you be quiet, McGee, okay. and give his honor a chance to tell us why he should be robbing bird's nests when we had a war off. <laughs> oh, there was no harm in that, kiddo, just a boy's prank. Put a sailor suit on a lad, and the first thing you know, he's shinnying up a tree to rob. I did not shinny up a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, this bird's crow, this crow's mask was on the bird. No. I mean, a board on a crow. Huh? A ship they call a bird's nest is a gold old suit. Look, when I said I was a crow in a nest, I gave you gave me the bird. No. I gave you the bird. You were the one. I didn't mean it. You said I. <laughs> McGee? <laughs> yes? You like boats? Sailboats? Oh, he just loves them, don't you, McGee? Yes, I do, Latrive. Why? Well, when the weather opens up, you can help me haul my new cat boat out to Dugan's Lake, oh, McGee. Right. I can load the spars and sails on my car, and you can take the hull with you. Take what, Latrive? The hull with you. Good day. <laughs> Billy Nelson, the orchestra, and I got my love to keep me warm.
Got my package wrapped, Kramer? Yes, here you are, McGee. That'll be 50 cents. You better charge it. I got nothing smaller than a 20. I can change a 20. Well, yeah, but I don't want to take all your change. You better charge it. I have plenty of change. Rather have larger bills. Yeah, me too. Better just charge it. No! <laughs> okay, here you are. This is a dollar bill. So what? I only owe you 50 cents. Well, you said you had nothing smaller than a 20. A dollar bill ain't any smaller than a 20. It's exactly the same size. Did you ever know? Oh. Uh... Here. Thanks. Hey, Molly, you ready? Yes, I've been waiting for you, McGee. Hello, Mr. Kramer. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Got everything you want? No, but I never expect to have, so I just smile bravely and carry on. <laughs> I see you're having a special sale on peanut brittle, five cents a pound. My gosh, five cents a pound. How can you make a profit selling peanut brittle for that price, Kramer? I got a deal with the dentist upstairs. He makes up any loss. <laughs> well, come in again, folks. Thanks, Mr. Kramer. Let's go, McGee. I'm anxious to get the laundry taken care of. Uh, by the way, what'd you buy in here? Who, me? Oh, just a little item to prove to myself that I ain't a complete chump, that's all. You see, every year I put off buying Christmas cards until two days before Christmas, and hey, there's Doc Gamble. Hi, Tonsil Trapper. Well, hello there, Crumble Brain. <laughs> hello, Molly. Hello, Doctor. What are you doing in here, Fatso? Trying to find out from Kramer what's good for a headache? Well, he'll tell you, boy. He'll tell you. Kramer knows more about medicine in five minutes than you'll know if you carry that silly little black bag around the rest of your misspent life. Now, McGee, that's not a very Look, nice way to... Windjammer, there is no one whose low opinion I value more highly than yours. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> I hope you'll retain your contemptuous attitude toward my professional activity. And next time you wake up at 3 a.m. suffering from gluttony and lobster a la mode, please forget that you know me. In fact, let's make it retroactive. Let's pretend we've never met. He couldn't do that, Doctor. He just couldn't. You're one of his favorite people. <laughs> Absolutely, Medicine Hat. I don't know how I'd ever get along without you, and believe me, I've made a strenuous effort. <laughs> oh, you're sweet. Incidentally, a bowling tonight, I wouldn't have been reminded of it, except that somehow you always make me think of alleys and gutters. <laughs> Sure, I'm bowling tonight, Pulse Pincher. See you there about 7.30, huh? Okay, Egg Face. Can I drop you anywhere now? No, Doctor. We're just taking some laundry down to the Sudsum mat, and we have the car outside. Thank you anyway. Well, not at all. Goodbye now. So long, Doc. Uh... <laughs> ah, good old Doc. I couldn't be fonder of him if he was human. Well, on to the suds, Matt. Shall we go, kiddo? What can we lose? Except a few buttons off your shirt. Well, what'd you think it was? I always thought they sold electric utilities in here. I've always felt kind of sorry for them, because every time I looked in the window, it seemed like they had the same old stock of washing machines <laughs> like they never sold. Hello it. there. What can we do for you? Mr. Wilcox. Junior. Well, hi, pal. Hello, Molly. Hey, does, does whatchamacallit, uh, you know, the th uh, Racine? They, they know you run this joint in your spare time? Oh, I don't really. This is my cousin's outfit. Oh. Big shrinker, Wilcox. <laughs> He had to go out of town, and I told him I'd take it over for the day. Got some laundry you want to do? Yes, we have, Mr. Wilcox. What'd you think we come in here for, Junior? To blow soap bubbles? <laughs> have you ever used our facilities before, or any like them? Well, no. I don't suppose it takes a mechanical genius to dump an armful of clothes in a tub and turn the switch, does it, Junior? Or is there more to it than that? Oh, it's quite an operation, pal. Mm. Uh, here, I've got a folder here that you ought to look at. Uh, here, read this, Molly. All right. Read it out loud so Fibber can hear it. Are you sure this is the... Go on, read it, kiddo. 
Well, let me see now. Well, all right. It says, uh, a clean home is a bright home and a happy home. Well, that's a rich little nugget of sales promotion. <laughs> How obvious can you get? And when polishing furniture so that it sparkles with a gleaming protective huh? luster, remember that Johnson's Paste Wax can be used on all wood surfaces. Light and hey, dark. Hey, 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 wait a minute. What that got to do quiet, with... Quiet, 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 pal. Go on, Molly. All right. It says, uh, Johnson's Paste Wax is the best possible way to beautify and protect wood floors, linoleum, furniture, and woodwork. There is no finer paste wax than Johnson. Use it wherever there are heavy traffic spots and busy doorways. Johnson's paste wax... Hey, is... hey. <laughs> hey, hey. Look, waxy. Yes, pal? <laughs> What's all that got to do with how this sudsmat here works? Nothing, nothing. You don't need any folder to explain that. Just pay me 30 cents a machine for as many machines as you want to use and go wash your duds. <laughs> nothing to it. Well, then what was the idea of making Molly read that stuff about the paste wax? Well, I wrote the copy for that folder and I wanted to see how it sounded. Molly reads so well and my secretary has a voice like a dissipated hoot owl. <laughs> so I wanted to hear her read it. Oh, excuse me. Wistful Vista Sudso, Matt, we're all in a lather to serve you. Oh, brother. Hi, Siri. Uh, what was that, madam? Well, certainly you can wash an afghan here. Why shouldn't you? Oh, the last time you tried it, he bit you. <laughs> well, maybe you'd better just turn the hose on him. Don't mention it. Well, kids, you want to get at it? Yes, I think I'll need two machines, Mr. Wilcox. No, I take number four and uh, number six, Molly. You can pay me on your way out. Soap powder on the shelf there. Call me if you need anything. Okay, Junior. It seems too easy, Molly. Going to ruin you women making this stuff look like this so look a little too simple. <laughs> Used to be that when a... McGee, don't talk so much. <laughs> Trying to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, help me dump a load in this machine. Okay, here we go. There. Where do I turn it on? Oh, here, I guess. What do we do now? Nothing. Just wait. The machine washes the clothes and wrings them almost dry. You mean it don't sew buttons back on or monogram your handkerchiefs? <laughs> he was. I don't. Oh, uh, hello there, Johnny. Hey, hello, Johnny. <laughs> hello, Mr. Oldtimer. Getting some laundry done? Yes, I just dropped in to wrench out some of my dainties. <laughs> I thought your landlady took care of your laundry for you, old-timer. Well, ordinary she does, Johnny, but me and her ain't on speaking terms these days. Had us a misunderstanding. Oh, what about? My cigars. She don't approve of your smoking cigars? I don't approve of her smoking my cigars. <laughs> Can't turn my back but what she grabs a handful of stogies. Why did she ever buy me a cigar? Only once. She passed a box of Coronas around the day Clarence laid his egg. Clarence laid an egg. Who's Clarence? Landlady's canary. We call her Clarice now. <laughs> <laughs> but up to then, we thought it was Clarence. <laughs> oh, love, your magic spell is everywhere. Meantime, whilst we're having this misunderstanding, I'll wrench out my own dainty. Well, I hope you straighten things out soon, old timer. Oh, we will, Johnny, we will. Hazel ain't unreasonable, fine woman, really. Widow woman, you know. Husband got shot in a holdup. Innocent bystander, I presume. Nope, guilty burglar. Had a record, <laughs> pardon me, had a record that would have wore three phonograph needles. <laughs> well, this is all very interesting, old timer, but yeah. we, better... <laughs> we better get back to the laundry. Yeah. We stand here long enough, somebody's going to bust out with the old iron and steel joke. Oh, what was that, McGee? That's one daughter where one feller says to t'other feller, what does your father do? And t'other feller says, my family's in the iron and steel business. Mama irons while Papa steals. <laughs> That's the one, Johnny? That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, too, Johnny, but that ain't the way I hear it. <laughs> What do you mean that isn't the way you heard it? You just told me. The way I heard it, fun feller says, <laughs> to tell the feller, say, he says, 
These bad snowstorms all over the country is kind of frightening, ain't they? Frightening, says t'other feller. They say California was so scared it turned white overnight. <laughs> See you later, kids. Gotta finish wrenching out my dainty. <laughs> Skyball paint. Oh, Skyball paint was a devil saint. His eyes was a fiery red. Good men have tried this horse to ride, and all of them are dead. Now I won't brag, but I rode this neck till his blood began to boil. Then I hit the ground and ate three pound of good old western soil. Singing high, oh, hooked high, oh, riding high and down you go, sung to the western soil. Oh, hooked high, oh, riding high and down you go, sung to the western soil. I swore by heck I'd break his neck for the jolt he gave my pride. I threw my noose on that cayuse and once more took a ride. He turned around and soon I found his head where his tail should be. So I says, says I, perhaps he's shy or he just don't care for me. Sing it high, oh, hooked I, oh, ride him high, down to go, son to the western soil. In town one day I chanced to stray upon old Sheriff Jim. For a hoop and a holler and a counterfeit dollar I sold the bag to him. But when he planned to see to his pants in Skyball's leather chair, I'll bet four bets when Skyball quits the sheriff won't be there. No, sir. See a hoop I old ride him high and down. Look at our clothes whirl around in that machine, will you, Molly? Hey, you don't think flinging my shorts around like that'll bag the seat of me? <laughs> if you don't, this won't, dearie, believe me. <laughs> no wonder clothes come out of there so clean. After a beating like that, anybody'd come clean. <laughs> How can you tell when they're done? Well, it's all automatic. When it's finished, it shuts itself off. Oh, I know some public speakers could use a gadget like that. <laughs> but as I was saying to Kramer in the drugstore just hey, today... Hey, listen, I... what was it you bought at Kramer's anyhow? You started to tell me once, but... <laughs> it wasn't anything important, really. Just something for the next holiday. The next holiday? Yep. You know how I always run around at the last minute buying stuff for holidays. Do I? Hunt for firecrackers July 3rd. And try to buy a squirting carnation for my lapel the day before April Spool and all stuff like that there. So I makes me a vow that the next holiday that comes along, I'm going to be ready. Hey, look. Ain't that Wallace Wimple that just came in here? I believe it is. You who, Mr. Wimple? Hello there. Hi, Wimp. Hello, folks. <laughs> come in to do the family laundry, Mr. Wimple? I thought you had a washing machine at home. Oh, we have, Mrs. McGee. But I sort of like to come in here and do it myself now and then. It reminds me of when I was a bachelor. <laughs> sort of watchful thinking, you might say. By the way, Wimp, uh, how is old? I mean, how is the... Uh, you, you mean uh, Sweetie Face, my big old wife? Yes. Is she well, Mr. Wimple? Oh, she's fine, thank you. But then Sweetie Face is always in fine condition. She's quite an athlete, you know. Yeah, so I've heard, Wimp. What's her favorite sport? Twisting my neck. <laughs> you mean athletics. Well, she just loves trapeze work. Yeah? We have one in the attic, you know. She fell off it yesterday and almost broke your back. Right. One of the ropes broke. My goodness. Was the rope badly worn or something? Mm, no. 
<laughs> it was mice, I think. <laughs> they can chew through a half-inch rope so it just looks like it had been cut with a jackknife. <laughs> like uh, this one here. <laughs> Wimp, one of these days she's going to nail you for one of them pranks and they'll have to scrape you off the wall with a butter spreader. <laughs> oh, I know it so well, Mr. McGee. <laughs> ah, but I guess I just like to live dangerously. <laughs> if you don't mind my saying so, Mr. Wimple, your marriage is a very strange one. How did you ever happen to meet your wife? Well, it was at a mask ball, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> I was made up as Captain Kidd, and she was made up as Cinderella, and she said, Hello, Kid," and I said, Hello, Cindy, and I told her I'd take her home, and when we took off our masks at midnight, we looked at each other and <gasps> blamed it on the punch. <laughs> <laughs> we found out later it was merely ginger ale and grapefruit juice. I guess I was just punch drunk. Well, I'll see you later, sir. Okay. <laughs> Hey, Molly, you know what? This old sweater I got on needs washing. I think I'll toss it in with the rest of the laundry. Oh, no. Oh, sure. No, no, McGee, don't do that. That's a wool sweater. Oh. It'll shrink to nothing. Well, I hope it does. It's stretched so much now, I keep catching my heel in the hem. There, clean her up. That'll fix her. You better go around, will you? Ah, oh, dear, I'm afraid you ruined that sweater, McGee. So what? It's almost wore out anyway. Kramer at the drugstore even made a nasty comment. Hey! Hey! You never did tell me what you bought in there. I didn't? No, you said it was for a holiday. What holiday? Easter. What'd you get for Easter? Easter egg dyes. Purple, green, red, orange, brown, and blue. Oh, wonderful. Let's see them. Okay, they're right here in the pocket of my sweat. Oh, my God. Stop the washing machine, quick. Oh. Grab that sweater. Take it off, quick. Oh, dear. Which machine is ours? This one? Yeah, no, no. This one, I think. No, that one. Oh, they all look alike. Shut them all off. Easter egg dies. Oh, my God. Oh, my laundry. <laughs> When you want to give your floors a beautiful polish, the thing that counts most is the kind of wax you use. And, of course, that's why more women use Johnson's Paste Wax than all other types of paste wax combined. Now, if you also want to get that beautiful Johnson finished quickly and easily, there's another Johnson product you should have. It's Johnson's Beauty Floor Electric Polisher. All you do is flip the switch and guide this light, easy-to-use polisher across the floor. In a few seconds, the whole waxed surface shines brilliantly. There's no effort, no special care required. Even a child can operate it. The big whirling brush does all the work. Ask your Johnson dealer about the Johnson Beauty Floor Electric Polisher. Buy one this week, or if you prefer, rent one by the day. Gee, I'm sorry I got them Easter egg dyes in the laundry, kiddo. Oh, don't worry about it, sweetheart. Besides, I think those green and orange pillowcases are rather attractive. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, you'll be the talk of the Elks Club with your lavender hankies. Yeah. I'll say I will. Now we got no laundry, no Easter egg dyes. As the doctor says when he stuck the hypo in the guy's arm, this is all in vain. <laughs> oh, did you get it, Molly? In vain? It's a pun. It ain't the... funny, McGee. I know. I was just <laughs> smiling through, love boat. Good night. <laughs> Good night, all. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's self polish and Ghost Boat, we're seen with Johnson of Brantford, Canada, bring you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? A direct question to the ladies. Why don't you polish your bookcase more often? Does it take too much time, too much trouble? Well, now you can clean and polish that bookcase in less than 90 seconds. Just use Johnson's Cream Wax. It makes the job practically as easy as dusting. Johnson's Cream Wax is the fastest wax polish you can buy. It cleans so quickly, dries so quickly, polishes so quickly that you brighten up furniture in a few seconds. Here's the reason. Johnson's Cream Wax not only cleans in a moment, it dries in a moment. So you can polish it immediately. And it dries to a hard finish. There's no sticky oil when you finish to catch and hold dust. Tomorrow, clean and polish your furniture practically as easily as you dust it. Just a few quick strokes with your cloth turns the trick. Get Johnson's Cream Wax. It's the fastest wax polish you can buy.
This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Thank you.